Today is Saturday, April 23rd. Here at The Newsworthy, we work hard to deliver news roundups with as little bias as possible. One way we do that is to look at a variety of news sources, even for just one story. We do our best to cite credible sources that are perceived as both right and left-leaning in the hopes of bringing you multiple perspectives in every episode and earning your trust. But what sources are left and right-leaning? And are there any that fall right in the center? Well, All Sides doesn't just guess or give their opinion about it. They've done some scientific analysis. That's what we're talking about today with our guest, Julie Mastrini. She developed the All Sides Media Chart and is their director of marketing and media bias ratings. She's made it her mission to educate news consumers about bias and is sharing behind the scenes of her media ratings in our conversation right now. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy Special Edition Saturday, when we sit down with a different expert or celebrity every Saturday to talk about something in the news. Don't forget to tune in every Monday through Friday for our regular episodes, where we provide all the day's news in 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. It's now time for today's Special Edition Saturday. Hi, Julie. Thank you for joining us here on the Newsworthy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. So first, let's just talk about what media bias is is and how it can show up in really a lot of different ways. You know, it can be clear opinions, but it can also just be things like word choice. How do you describe media bias? Media bias is the tendency for journalists to report information in a way that reinforces a policy preference, a political ideology, financial or corporate interests, a moral framework, or a worldview. There are a lot of different ways, like you said, that that can manifest. Um, There are small things that we can kind of look for that can be kind of subtle or perhaps more obvious. So one that people are typically really familiar with is sensationalism. Um, And that's when journalists use, you know, really like emotive words, you know, so-and-so blasts whoever, things like that, that really like evoke strong emotions. Um, But then there are all these other different types of media bias that are lesser known, but show up a lot. Bias by omission, which voices aren't being presented, slant. Uh, So that's when journalists play up one side of the story or a certain piece of information and not others. Um, Spin, which is vague or dramatic language. So there's all these different ways that media bias can manifest. But the overall result of media bias is really that um, if we aren't aware of it, we run the risk of not thinking for ourselves um, and being manipulated into somebody else's, you know, beliefs or which can impact our behavior, voting patterns um, or supporting someone's uh, agenda. And to be clear, you see media bias on both ends of the political spectrum. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, This happens across the board. So All Sides is really set up to help people start to understand that and consume the news in a more conscious way. And bias can show up in a purposeful manner as well as a subconscious manner, right? There are a lot of ways in which um, bias is subconscious. It's not being done intentionally, right? Um, Especially we see this with word choice. A lot of people will just not be aware that somebody else might describe the same event a different way or see it a different way. So a lot of bias is really just that we're in our own bubbles and then that comes out in, you know, how we talk about things, how we describe things, um, which information we focus on or ignore. The mission of All Sides really is to get people out of their filter bubbles so they can better understand the world and other people. What really stands out about All Sides to me is the scientific analysis done to determine how a media outlet leans. So it's not just somebody's opinion about a news organization that, you know, that opinion comes with its own bias. So how does that analysis work? work. One of the things that we do is an editorial review, which is when an expert panel gets together people from the left, center, and right, and they review the works of a media outlet and look for different types of bias and how it's manifesting, and then kind of come to a consensus on the outlet's bias. Then we also do blind bias surveys, uh, which are probably one of our more robust methodologies. And this is when we take content from media outlets, we strip it of any branding so people don't know where it's coming from. So they're not, you know, bringing their preconceived notions of a media outlet's bias or credibility to the content. They read the content and then they say what the overall, what they believe the overall bias rating of the outlet is. And we survey Americans from all walks of life, all across the political spectrum for our blind bias surveys. Um, And then we can kind of analyze that data in different ways and look and see how the average American views the bias of a media outlet. So talk about some of the categories that you all have and use for various news outlets and how you define them. Yeah. So we have a five point scale currently. It's left, lean left, center, uh, lean right, and right. We rate sources overall. We're not rating individual articles. We're rating the the source overall. So, you know, from Fox News, you're going to get the right view. And from the New York Times, you're going to get a lean left view. 
So the way that these categories are defined can be a little bit tricky because there is a lot of subjectivity involved. And we're pretty clear about this. Like somebody who themselves is on the left might see a lean left outlet as being in the center, but people who are on the right would say, no, no, they're, they're leaning left. And it's not a perfect system. We try to tell people that, you know, political ideology is complex. There are a lot of different ways that outlets can manifest a political bias. I mean, you have bias in the sense of, you know, like, is there an elitist bias or a populist bias? Is there um, a libertarian or more authoritarian bias? So our five point scale can't possibly capture everything, but we sort of try to, you know, create these categories and put media outlets into these buckets to help people begin to understand where the information is coming from on the political spectrum. It's kind of a map to help people start to orient themselves in the media landscape and be more conscious about what they're consuming. So as you're looking at the daily coverage out there, what surprises you the most about the typical news coverage you see on a regular basis? How the left and right in America today are operating from very different worldviews, very different prior beliefs about the country, about what the country is and could be and should be. This is just very much revealed in how media outlets report on really contentious topics and especially around issues related to the culture war in the United States. Those are probably the topics around which we see the most bias, the most differences in word choice, differences in how they're describing the exact same thing or the exact same event. A 2020 study from Brown University found that political polarization has accelerated faster in the United States compared to other democracies. The researchers pointed to partisan cable news. I know that's not something that you analyze, but the cable news being at least part of the problem. Do you agree with that? And overall, what can be done about political polarization in the U.S.? It definitely does seem that things have accelerated. You know, even though we don't rate cable news, we're very aware of the very different worldviews and the bias that's coming from cable news that so many people are exposed to. As far as what can be done about it, getting the left and right to talk to one another and better understand one another, there have been some studies that show that if you can kind of come up with an argument for the other side, like how would somebody on the other side respond to this issue or think about this issue, it can help you to better understand them instead of creating a a caricature in your mind of, oh, well, they just must be hateful or they just must be this or that, Uh, but actually understanding the thinking. A lot of our tools, a lot of what we focus on is... Really, the the goal of it is to help reduce polarization in the United States. Still ahead, we're talking about the sometimes blurred line between what is news coverage and what is just opinion or commentary, and what the data shows about Americans' trust in media right now. But first, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsors. Style or comfort? How do you choose? Well, we no longer have to, thanks to Tommy John's new loungewear. Seriously, these fabrics are super soft and cozy and always feel high quality and seem to hang on my body just right. I appreciate that Tommy John loungewear features tagless labels because you can't be comfy when a tag is scratching you. And when you're getting that level of thought and detail put into comfort, you know you are in good hands. My husband knows it too. He's really picky about his comfort level, and yet his hands-down favorite work socks are Tommy John. He says they're the only dress socks he can find that don't fall down and are comfortable all day long. Tommy John does not have customers. They have fanatics, and I'm one of them. So I want you to try out Tommy John, too. And now is the perfect time because it's Tommy John's anniversary month. So whether you're trying them for the very first time or a longtime fan, get 25% off site-wide right now at TommyJohn.com slash newsworthy. Go to TommyJohn.com slash newsworthy today for 25% off. TommyJohn.com slash newsworthy. See site for details. This podcast is also sponsored by Bowl & Branch. I'm sure you've heard a lot about thread count when it comes to sheets, even if you don't fully get why it matters. Well, Bowl & Branch points out it doesn't really matter how many threads you have if they are not the best threads possible in the first place. Bowl & Branch uses the best 100% organic cotton threads for a superior softness and better night's sleep. I actually have Bowl & Branch sheets on my bed right now, and I love them. They're really comfortable, yet breathable. I'm sleeping super well, and they only get softer with each wash, really. Plus, I love the look of the color we chose. It's called Shore. It's a nice light blue. I have the signature hemmed sheets. They're actually the best seller, and it's for a reason. They have more than 10,000 stellar reviews. Plus, I love that they're 100% free from toxins, so no pesticides or other harsh chemicals. 
Missed the Bowling Branch April sale? Well, my listeners get exclusive access to a post-sale 20% site-wide discount through the end of April with the promo code NEWSWORTHY at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. With the promo code NEWSWORTHY for 20% off through the end of April. Okay, now back to our conversation with Julie Mastrini. The other thing I want to talk about is bias versus facts. Obviously, how facts are presented can be bias, but there are also flat-out lies and false news that exist online as well. What do you think it's, is most important for people to think about or to know when it comes to bias versus facts in the news? This is something that we get asked a lot because people really ask us, you know, why don't you rate credibility? Why don't you just tell us who's telling the truth? And this is a very tricky thing because, um, you know, there's objective statements, things that you can observe, that you can measure with empirical evidence. Um, and then there's subjective statements, which are colored by your worldview, your preferences, um, your beliefs. And I think learning the difference between those two things can really help with consuming the news because it'll be much more easier to spot when someone's just stating a fact, you know, President Biden said this, we can hear it, we can observe it, that's what he said, versus President Biden went on a rampage today and, and you know, erupted at so-and-so, right, where it's all kind of colored with someone's interpretation. We rate political bias to help people to understand that the news can be presented in ways where the facts are true, but it's being sort of distorted in a way that's making you think something is good or bad, or it's being kind of colored with a, a certain lens that lends itself to a certain political angle. Really what we wanna do is enable people to think for themselves, um, to be able to compare information, to spot bias, to then be able to come to their own conclusion about whether or not something is true or false. A 2021 Gallup poll found Americans' trust of the media has dropped to the second lowest on record behind 2016. One, why do you think that is? And two, do you think it's fair criticism? Like, should the trust be that low? I do think it's fair. I think that the traditional standards of journalism are in a lot of ways not being met. Journalists used to be trained to, you know, report objectively, to get both sides, to lay out quotes from both sides, to describe things in a manner that was not colored by their preferences or beliefs or political ideology. And there's a degree to which it's never going to be possible to have completely unbiased news. Journalists are finite beings. They can't possibly interview everybody. They're going to have to make subjective choices of what to include and what not to include and how to say things. I also think it's important to add, though, that there is often a difference between a journalist and a pundit. And sometimes I think when we talk about, quote, the media, everything gets lumped in together when really there's a wide variety of types of news organizations, types of people presenting the news. Can you speak to that too? Yeah, absolutely. All Sides actually gives separate bias ratings for the news and opinion pages of certain media outlets. So we do this for the New York Times. Um, we do this for uh, Newsmax, where we see and recognize that there is a clear delineation between the bias of their news content and the bias of their opinion content. And in the past, that line used to be very clear for most media outlets. The opinion pages, the analysis content was kept clearly separate from the hard news that was just trying to give you the facts. I think the reason now that people, you know, they say the media and they mean all of those things is because those lines are really being blurred. And a lot of the time you do see analysis creeping into what should be the hard news stories or what is labeled as hard news. We've talked in the past here on the show, and I think it's something that I think about a lot, which is the so-called exhausted majority. We really try to serve those people, the people who are tired of the intense political divide and maybe aren't as loud as people on the extremes all the time. Do you still think that is the majority of people, that the majority of people don't necessarily want all of the yelling? It probably is. I mean, you are always are going to have those, you know, news junkies and politics junkies who are really plugged in and really want to know what's going on and really care about the details of what's going on in the political sphere or within the, the U.S. culture war or whatever it may be. Um, but then, yeah, you do have a lot of people who, you know, would prefer to check out and really not have to worry about those things and just live their lives. Just from my vantage point, it seems that more and more people are feeling like they're like required to think about politics, even if they don't want to, just because so many things in the United States are politicized now, uh, especially around the election. It was just constant onslaught. And a lot of people were struggling, even in their personal relationships um, with people who disagreed with them politically. So it really was just becoming this sort of like totalizing environment of 
things being very politicized, either from the media or in our personal lives. So while that exhausted majority definitely exists, I think for a lot of people, it's becoming harder to ignore. Well, thank you to Julie Mastrini for sharing her insights with us. You can learn more about All Sides at allsides.com. And of course, we'll continue to bring you the news in our signature fast, fair, and fun style. Just tune in to those regular episodes every Monday through Friday for quick 10-minute news roundups with a variety of perspectives. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend. 